I would tell her that I love her very much. I regret so much and constantly blame myself for not being able to save her then. This is the worst. Svetlana's sister Irina Filkina became one of the hundreds of victims of the Russian occupiers in the Kyiv region. Then, in the first days of a full-scale invasion, many simply did not have time to understand that the Russians were capable of such cruelty. Irina, like thousands of people, was under occupation. A week later she was shot when she she was just walking down the street. You know, for me the war just stopped in March. It is one thing when someone dies after a long illness and is buried, but when they kill like this for no reason at all, and we didn't even know how to find her, to bury her, so that she would have her own grave, to have somewhere to come to her. The tragedy in Bucha opened the world's eyes to Russia's war against Ukraine. In just a month, the Russian army killed 422 people there. This is one-fifth of all those who then left remained in the city. Unfortunately, the massacre in Bucha was the first but by no means the only massacre of Ukrainian civilians by the Russians. Now the visits of most Western politicians to Ukraine begin with a visit to this town. Those who saw Bucha no longer have any doubts about who exactly should win this war. It is very difficult to explain this in textbooks. It needs to be seen and felt. As an example, when Irpin and Bucha were liberated, delegations immediately went there. First the president and I with the parliamentarians, and a week later the speaker of the same of Poland and my good friend Tomasz Grodzki. We brought him to the place of collective burial, he said. I am a professional surgeon by education. I have seen everything in my life, but the smell that I felt there. I was already confident in Ukraine. This will not give me the opportunity to go off this path. Everywhere from where it is possible to dislodge the Russian occupiers, they find evidence of murders and mass war crimes. Intimidation, looting, sexual and physical abuse. Children are often victims as well. So, after the liberation of Kherson, several torture chambers were found in the city where the Russians mocked the Ukrainians. In one of these basements there was a cell for children. And the invaders forcibly take many Ukrainian citizens to Russia, according to the commissioner of the Verkhovna Rada for Human Rights. The Russians deported about 150,000 only minor Ukrainians. The fact of deportation in itself allows accusing Russia of genocide. Why are we talking about genocide? Because according to international law, one of its signs is a forced transfer from one ethnic group to another. They take Ukrainian children who communicate in Ukrainian, move them to the territory of Russia and tell them, you never were Ukrainians. They forbid the use of Ukrainian language and do not issue documents, do not let children out. Dmitro Lubinets, Commissioner of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine for Human Rights, in a comment to the agency Ukraine Forum. Most representatives of developed countries unequivocally assess the actions of the Russians in Ukraine. In many states this has already moved from the level of political statements to real actions. Thus, apart from Ukraine, seven countries have officially recognized Russia's actions as genocide. A collective letter to the International Criminal Court was signed by 43 countries and the European Union. In the statement they support Kyiv's appeal under the the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. Country leaders also regularly call on international institutions to hold the aggressor country to account. Colleagues, today, a year later, we know Kyiv is still standing. Russia is weakened. The transatlantic alliance is stronger than ever. In the case of Russia's actions in Ukraine, we have examined the evidence. We know the legal standards. And there is no doubt these are crimes against humanity. And war criminals will be held accountable. Work on the creation of a special international tribunal for the trial of war mongers and participants in the war from Russia is already underway. US Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs Victoria Nuland told Congress that a military tribunal could be set up already by this summer. Reported by Serhii Kulas, Danilo Kobza, UATV News.